Take a peek inside the freak show tent at history's most famous circus freaks. From Tom Thumb and the original Siamese twins to Lobster Boy and the Living Skeleton, here's a look at some of history's most famous and fascinating circus sideshow performers. Grady Styles, the Lobster Boy. Grady Styles Jr. was the fourth generation of Styles family members born with ectrodactyly, a family trait going back to the 1840s which caused their fingers and toes to fuse into claws. Grady's father was already part of a freak show with a traveling carnival, so Grady began performing early as the Lobster Boy. As an adult, Styles and his two youngest children performed as the Lobster Family. But Styles was an abusive alcoholic who beat his wife, so this was no happy family. On the eve of his oldest daughter's wedding in 1978, he shot and killed her husband QB, an 18-year-old kid who Grady disliked because he had called him a freak. Grady confessed, saying the kid had attacked him, and was convicted of third-degree murder. The trial was quick, and included witness testimony from a carnival fat lady, and a bearded woman. Because no institution was equipped to deal with his condition, however, he was sentenced to house arrest and 15 years probation. In 1992, Stiles' wife Mary and her son Harry Glenn Newman, a human blockhead, hired sideshow performer Christopher Wyant to kill Stiles for $1,500. Wyant shot the 55-year-old man multiple times in the back of the head while he was watching TV in his trailer. Styles was so disliked that only 10 people came to his funeral. It was noted that no one volunteered as pallbearers, and his coffin was adorned by a bouquet of flowers with a banner that read from your loving wife. Records from Mary's prison incarceration notes that she had a tattoo on her buttocks that read Grady Styles Jr. Lobster Boy's son, Grady Styles III, was also born with ectrodactyly and works as a sideshow performer today. He and his sister Kathy made a television appearance in 2014 on the AMC series Frick Show to talk about their father, Blanche Dumas, the woman with two vaginas and three legs. Here's the tale of Blanche Dumas who was born on the island of Martinique in 1860 to a French father and a mother of African origin. She is said to have had a very broad pelvis, two imperfectly developed legs and a third leg attached to her cockagious and, in addition to normal well-developed breasts, she also had two smaller rudimentary breasts close together above her pubic area. Blanche also had two vaginas and two well-developed vulvas. It is said that she had developed sensitivity in both her vaginas and had allegedly entertained men with both of them. According to the book, her extreme libido, is what led her to become a courtesan in Paris. Later in life, she would meet our next oddity, Juan dos Santos, the man with two penises with whom she would develop a strange love affair with. Juan dos Santos. Born in 1840, Mr. Dos Santos would spend his entire life seeking love as his strange combination of three legs and two penises made him quite the oddity in his rural home in Portugal. Santos was constantly being harassed by various circus owners such as P.T. Barnum, who were angry he refused to put himself on display and instead chose to live a solitary, quiet life. However, this would all change when he met the then, 25-year-old courtesan with two vaginas Blanche Dumas, whom he was rumored to have had a long-lasting and steamy love affair with. General Tom Thumb Charles Sherwood Stratton was born in 1838. He stopped growing when he was six months old. He then began to grow again, though slowly, in 1847. By his 18th birthday, Stratton had reached a height of 2 feet 8.5 inches. He began touring with P.T. Barnum as General Tom Thumb at the age of five, amassing fame and fortune that later allowed him a lavish lifestyle and business partnership with Barnum. Tom Thumb died in 1883 of a stroke at age 45, six months after narrowly escaping a disastrous hotel fire at the New Hall House in Milwaukee that killed 71 people. He had reached a maximum height of 3.35 feet and weighed 71 pounds. Four-legged Lady Myrtle Corbin 
Myrtle Corbin, known as the four-legged girl from Texas, was a dipygus. She was born with a severe congenital deformity of conjoined twining that caused her to have two separate pelvises and a smaller set of inner legs that she was able to move. When she was just a month old, her father began showing her to curious neighbors for a dime. Eventually she attracted the attention of P.T. Barnum, and began performing when she was 13. She later performed with the Ringling Brothers and a freak show at Coney Island. By the time she was 18, she had made enough money to retire. She went on to marry and have five children. It is said that three were born from one orifice and two from the other. Ella Harper the Camel Girl Freak show attraction Ella Harper, the Camel Girl, was born in 1873 with a condition called congenital genu recurvatum, which caused her knees to bend backward. She was featured in W. H. Harris's Nickel Plate Circus in 1886, but there are no references to her after. Cheng and Eng Chang and Eng Bunker, possibly the most famous circus freaks who ever lived, were conjoined twins born in 1811. A small piece of cartilage joined them at the sternum, and they had two complete livers that were fused together. Their condition, and the location of their birth is the origin of the term Siamese twins. In 1829, they began touring the world as a curiosity with a man named Robert Hunter. When their contract was up, they went into business for themselves. Eventually they settled on a plantation in North Carolina, where they married sisters Adelaide and Sarah Ann Yates. Between them, they had 21 children. Eng awoke one morning in 1874 to find Cheng had died. A doctor was quickly summoned to perform an emergency separation, but it was too late. Eng died three hours later. A death cast of Cheng and Eng, as well as their preserved liver, can now be seen at the Mutter Museum in Philadelphia. Schlitzie the Pinhead Though he was billed as the last of the Aztecs, Schlitzie was most likely born in the Bronx in 1901. He was born with a neurodevelopmental disorder called microcephaly, leaving him with a small brain and skull, and severe mental retardation. Schwitzi performed in sideshow attractions with many circuses. He began his film career with the sideshow in 1928, and Todd Browning's 1932 classic Freaks. Both films were dramas set in the circus, using actual freak show performers. His last major performance was in 1968. He died in 1971, at age 70. As you can see, the history of the circus sideshow is one of both interest and intrigue and it is a shame that in the modern world, those born differently able than ourselves are often viewed as being incapable of offering any sort of value to our overall society. During the last several decades, the term freak has become pejorative in nature and is considered an insult by many. However, those that are born of these curious lineages often consider the moniker a mark of prestige, with many of the offspring of these very performers having settled in the Florida town of Gibsonton, where many still live today. If you enjoyed this video, please tell us in the comments below and if you have not already subscribed, please do so, it gives us the motivation to continue making great content. God bless, and thanks for watching.